Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. It is one of these um, times that we uh, are getting really busy in life. And so we don't get a lot of this morning series. But today we are, and hopefully tomorrow, and, and um, we shall see what it uh, happens for us this week. And we, our apologies for missing a lot of these because we don't get our devotions in when we don't get our devotions in with you guys as well. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good, good. How's everything? Good. It's the first day. Uh, any big plans? No. Uh, today I was supposed to be a dog bath day, but it's kind of not yeah. looking so hot. Yeah, it's looking really grim out there. So yeah, definitely not a dog bath day so far. We shall see what happens. Okay, guys, this is Yash Scriptures. This is the greatest English translation you'll find anywhere. It is a um, 103 books. It is a 14.5 font. It is a little under 1.4 million words, and it has the name of our creator and the name of his son completely restored so that uh, we have not been deceived anymore. And so we actually have this, and on the back of the book is the name of the son of the Most High. His name is Yahushua. And for every scriptures that we are able to get sold and into your guys' hands, we're also able to get one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains. And they are very excited. Um, these books should be available here in June. Um, in just about a month, they are hot on the press right now. And I, we're hoping that they will be uh, finished very, very soon. So they are all right there. Um, if you cannot purchase them, not a problem, because here are the free PDFs. Everything that Yash Scriptures has is free because the word of our creator needs to be free as it should be free because the only way that we're going to reach a lot of these people is by getting them into things like this. And these, this is Josh Scriptures, the PDF. This is a, a PDF you can email around. It's small enough that it can be put as an attachment. Um, you can also email the Apocrypha. Both of these are available right here. The exact same thing that is in our giant book is available right here, as well as the eSword modules. If you guys would like the eSword modules for this, they are they work for PC, they work for Mac, um, and they also work for Android. And so you, there's two different versions right here. And... Um, they're all available free of charge. Now, the last thing I'd like to speak on is this. These are the Amazon books. These Amazon books are pretty cool because they are smaller stories. They're smaller stories from the Apocrypha. A lot of people will never, ever get a full Yah scriptures. And, and some people, especially the prisoners, would love to read books like this. I'm still trying to find anyone that wants to do a donation into some prisons so that we can get traditions of men um, like a case of them delivered into the prisons. And so we have all the contacts for all the people there. And um, hopefully at some point somebody will roll along and want to help us out. And that is what Yah's Scriptures is about. It is about feeding Yah's sheep. Okay, we are heading into the Malekium 1, first Malekium, which is Kings, chapter 14. Um, somebody break down where and what and what exactly has happened to this point. Anybody? All right, so... Solomon became king. His son, Rechoban, took over after Solomon uh, became evil king. Yahuwah told him he was to rip the king away from him. That he was, not, he was only going to let him have one tribe, Yahuda, and the rest of the tribes would go to another man. And he gave that to a man named Yerobam. And we're about to learn about him today. But Rechoban is a very wicked person. He listens to his evil friends instead of listening to his wise old advisors. And so evil things start happening to him, and he is worse than his father was. And we can see the downfall uh, beginning of Yisrael. Yeah, and the downfall actually started, um, well, it started back in the days of Moshe, and then it also uh, continued on through the days of Joshua. Well, it kind of had a rest restoration point around that way at the time. It had a restoration point, but they still were never ever able to cling the lands. And so even though it was a restoration time, they still had all of the outsiders, and they were all stuck around them. Um, from the mistakes that the forefathers, um, Joshua, Yahushua, had made when he was leading them. Okay, uh, let's go. First Kings 14, verse 1. At that time, Abiyah, the son of Yerobam, became sick. And Yerobam said to his wife, Please arise and disguise yourself so that they do not know that you are the wife of Yerobam. And go to Shiloh. See, Akiah, the Nabi, is there, who spoke that I would be sovereign over this people. And you shall take with you ten loaves and cakes and a jar, of, a jar of honey, and go to him. Let him declare to you what becomes of the child. Now, why do you guys think he sent, he had 10 loaves going? I don't know, maybe the guy is really hungry and he's 10 loaves of bread. Yeah, but you think? He has 10 tribes. So but he's the southern tribe. He's, these guys are the southern tribes. This is, this is. Is he trying to drop hints this, here? This, isn't this northern? This is this, this is southern. Isn't, isn't Judah down below? This is, this is, these are guys no. are Judah, right? Yeah, Judah's no. down below. Jeroboam's the guy who took over the 10 tribes. 
Oh, did he? Yeah, Rechabam's the uh, son of... Oh, son of okay, him. okay, okay, okay. So we're dealing with the northern tribes of Yisrael right now. Okay, uh, Jay, give us back a quick little history on this this part, because who is uh, Yerobam? Yerobam is the as a guy from the tribe of Ephraim, and he was Yahuwah you know, anointed him king over the other ten tribes. Okay, so there we go. Then we have the ten loaves, which is uh, clearly what he's he's you know. He's dropping hints to prophet here. Yeah. Why didn't he just go himself? I mean, he's just, Ask the prophet himself. Um, I don't know. But continuing on. Let him declare to you what becomes of the child. And Yerobam's wife did so, and rose up and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Achiah. But Achiah was unable to see, for his eyes had dimmed because of his age. And Yahuwah had said to Ab Achiah, who, See, the wife of Yerobam is coming to ask you a word about her son, for he is sick. Speak to her thus and thus, for it shall be when she comes in that she makes herself strange. And it came to be when Akiyahu heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door. He said, come in, wife of Yerobam. Why are you making yourself strange? And I have been sent to you with heaviness. Go say to Yerobam, thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael, because I exalted you from among the people and made you ruler over my people Yisrael and tore the rain away from the house of Dawid and gave it to you. And you have not been as my servant Dawid, who guarded my commands and who followed me with all his heart to do only what was right in my eyes. But you have done more evil than all who were before you, for you have gone and made yourself other mighty ones and molded images to provoke me and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, see, I am bringing evil to the house of Yerobam and shall cut off from Yerobam every male in Yisrael, whether shut up or large, left at large, and sweep away the remnant of the house of Yerobam as one sweeps away dung until it is all gone. Now, hold on real quick. I'm going to go see if I can find a uh, picture of this. All right. So I found a little picture right here. Um, so what we're dealing with, because I was confused on this thing because it's been a while since we've been back to this particular um, chapter or this book. Um, we're dealing with the northern tribes of Israel, And this is not a map of um, current of where we're at, but kind of just a... Uh, an idea of uh, what it is. So we're ended up with the, the southern tribes, and that would be Judah and Benjamin. And then you had all these northern tribes. This is what we're dealing with up above right there. And so we want to make sure it's clear in all of this stuff exactly who we're who we're talking about here, because both tribes, it's very it's both tribe. One goes into captivity at one point. One goes into cap, you know, ten go into captivity at another point. Um, and the northern tribe, the one we're talking about right here. We've, we've never come back. And when I say we have never come back, um, the, the people of Yah have been dispersed across the globe. Well, it's not a globe. It across the plane, sorry, uh, programming. Yeah, so the, um, this, is, this is what we're, we're talking about is there's, there's a group of people. And they, at the end of time, it, it talks about the northern tribes coming back and, and coming back to Yah. And so there is a, a remnant out there. And this is why I believe we are these remnant if, if we will obey the law, statutes, and commandments. Of our creator. Okay, going on to 11. Now, um, what, what did you guys talk about uh, sweeping away dung until it's all gone? What, what yeah, was I, don't your think I think it's going to go so well. Uh, about what? Sweeping away dung. Until it's all gone? Well, that's yeah. what they're talking about. You think you can get rid of a dung when you sweep it? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess if you're using a broom, it's going to have some issues. It depends on what it is. I mean, if it's just like a hefty, hefty thing, you know, you just sweep that right up and sweep it off. Maybe it's dry. Yeah, you never know. Okay, anyway, sorry guys. Right. Here we are. 11. Those of Yerobam. Who die in the city, the dogs eat. And, and so, yeah, so therefore, this is what he's saying, right? So this is what the prophets say. Those are Yerobam who die in the city, the dogs eat. And those who die in the field, the birds of the Shammai eat. For Yahuwah has spoken it. And you, arise, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. And all Yisrael shall mourn for him and bury him. For he is the only one of Yerobam who shall come to the grave. Uh, because in him there is found a good report toward Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, in the house of Yerobam. All right, th what did that just say? That didn't sound right. Uh, so basically when she steps foot back in the gates of like her place, the child will die because Yahuwah only sees good in him out of the house of Yerobam. But then he says, for he is the only one of Yerobam who shall come to the grave. But they end up, because in him there is found a good report toward Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael. I think I like a proper, proper burial, like a proper like, Dying. I think come to the grave like in peace. Oh, in one piece. Yeah, one, or like in peace, or like like in like. He's the only one of you who shall come to the grave. Oh, right, like because the rest burial. of him, right? Okay, because so verse eleven, gets, like, like painful deaths. Yeah, verse eleven says the dog, the city, the dogs eat it, and so if your dogs are eating it, they're gonna take off with all your bones and things. Okay, that's what we're talking about there. So this is a, this is curses that we're dealing with here. Um, Fourteen. 
And Yahuwah shall raise up for himself a sovereign over Yisrael who cuts off the house of Yerbam this day and even now. And Yahuwah shall smite Yisrael as a reed is shaken in the water and shall pluck Yisrael from this good land which he gave to their fathers and shall scatter them beyond the river because they made their Asherim provoking Yahuwah. And he shall give Yisrael up because of the sins of Yerbam who sinned and who made Yisrael sin. And the wife of Yerbam rose up and went and came to Tur Turtsa. When she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And they buried him, and all Yisrael lamented for him according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke through his servant, Akiyahu, the Nabi. It's a lot different than the days we're in right now, right? You pick up the phone and you call home and say, hey, this kid's going to die. But she got, she was, she had to like take this, um, this, it's a curse, the news of a curse, right? That her kid is going to die. Um, and she had to walk back knowing that the second she stepped back. Now, do you think that uh, she delayed in her trek back because she knew that when she stepped back in the city, the kid would... <laughs> Hold on, guys. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. All right, guys. Continuing on. Um, um, what do you guys think? I don't know. I don't know if she'd like want to like delay it or if she'd want to get it over with. I guess it would depend on the person you think she, she rushed was. back to see if maybe the kid would be alive if she went faster? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know, maybe she thought maybe it was like a time thing, so she went back faster, to die as fast, but, I mean, the second she entered into her her little Yisrael or whatever, she lost a child, so I don't think it matter how long it took her, how fast she went, she was yeah. still lose a child no matter what. Yeah, I was just wondering what she was thinking, though. Okay, 19. And the rest of the acts of Yerbam, how he fought and how he reigned, see, they are written in the book of the annuals of the sovereigns of Yisrael. And the days that Yerbam reigned was 22 years. So he slept with his fathers, and Nadab, Nadav, his son, reigned in his place. Meanwhile, Rechabim, son of Shalom, reigned in Yehuda. There we go. There is our southern tribe. This is the uh, days of our lives with uh, our split kingdoms here. Rechabim was 41 years old when he became sovereign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahuwah had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naama, the Ammonitess. And Yahuda did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and asherim on every high hill. Every... Alright, we're so sorry, guys. It's like, I don't know, these dogs, they hear something out there in the middle of the jungle, and so they go off. Okay, so let's let's go over this. Where were we at on this whole thing, right? We're in the middle of reading one of them. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think it was 21. I, I think it's 23. I think we were on 23. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and ashram on every high hill and under every green tree. So this is um, this is every bad thing that they did, right? So it says they built for themselves high places and pillars and ashram on every high hill uh, and under every green tree. And, that's um, a lot. That's, that's a lot, right? Because this is what these people, a lot of these people um, are like when they say like mother nature or things like that, um, that's a, that's a goddess. And so they, um, well, it's, it's one of their goddesses. And, um, so these people would put stuff under green trees and there's, there's, you know, things inside of Jeremiah that talk about the green trees and how we shouldn't like celebrate the green trees, how we shouldn't do any of this kind of stuff. But it sounds like they really, really went astray. And then every single high hill, um, it sounds like for some, whatever reason, they like to worship on a high, high hill, um, with this ashram and, and this is what they did. And so they were, they, they really botched everything here. 24. And there were also cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the Gentiles, which Yahuwah dispossessed before the children of Israel. And yeah, in a holy land, in a land of our creator, you're not, you're not going to have, um, hookers. You're not going to have people like this. You're not going to have prostitutes that are out there. Doing this kind of stuff because that would be adultery. You would be pulled outside the city gates and um, killed. They would pick up rocks and kill you off for that. So 25. And it came to be in the fifth year of sovereign Rechabam that Shishak, sovereign of Mitzrayim, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of Yahuwah and the treasures of the sovereign's house. And he even took away all. And he took away all the shields of gold which Shalom had made. And sovereign Rechabam made shields of bronze to replace them and trusted them into the hands of the chiefs of the guard who guarded the entrance of the sovereign's house. So they went from gold down to bronze. Definitely a different um, thing. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't last long either. The, being the people, uh, like the house of Yahuwah, you know, Solomon was saying we should always pray towards that and uh, there would be like a great place, but it didn't last long. It's already getting destroyed. Like one king down and it's already 
begun. Yep. And so um, in the book of Josephus, it talks about um, that actually back in the day, they had a, a metal that they, they thought was better than gold, which was a uh, bronze and gold mix. And that is what everybody was... Um, it was really, really expensive. That was like, they, that's what they really liked. And so it's interesting though, um, the bronze, I always thought bronze is obviously much cheaper than gold, but they probably, you know, it's still probably going to stop, you know, whatever's happening that, that's trying to get through that. All right, 28. And it came to be whenever the sovereign went into the house of Yahuwah, the guards would bring them in, then take them back into the guard room. And the rest of the acts of Rechobam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of annuals of the sovereigns of Yahuda? And there was fighting between Rechobam and Yerobam all the days. So Rechobam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of Dawid. And the name of his mother was Naamah, the Ammonitess. And Ab Ab Aviam, his son, reigned in his place. All right. Um, so here we are, right? It is, uh, it's, uh, it's game over for yeah, Israel. So it's getting worse. And you can see what happened when you don't teach your children Torah when you teach some other things it just continues on for generations now there's this generational curse with david's children yeah there's generational curses everywhere both both northern and southern and all everybody everybody's doing you know what they want in their own eyes and nobody remembers the days of old nobody remembers um the the days when the, the calf was ground into gold because they had done these things now it's just commonplace and that's the thing is is yahuwah loves his land he loves yisrael the land of yisrael that's something special to him and none of these things were supposed to be there. You're not supposed to murder in his land. You're not supposed to have abortions. You're not supposed to worship other Elohim. All of that is an abomination to him. And one day he will uh, send his son back. And all of this trashy stuff is all around. He, they're going to clear this stuff up and clear the lands. And um, it's going to be a betch, much better place than what it is now. Okay. Everybody? Yep. Have all a right. good day. Shalom. Right. Shalom. Shalom.